Hey guys, thought I'd do a quick follow-up video. There's a sort of depressed and sad video I put up, and once in a while it gets a comment. For people who search for MIDI Solutions Event Processor, that might be a video that comes up, and it's not hopeful. So just today, after the, all these years, I found a workaround. This is the MIDI Event Processor Plus. The controllers that these, the little uh, knobs and faders, might only do CC values. The parameters you want to edit in here with those uh, Teonier SysX messages. Okay, so it didn't work again. I brought out the Focusrite again. Uh, the old interface, okay, it's got MIDI out and MIDI in. So you USB this to your computer and then you make sure that it's working. Uh, and then you load up the MIDI Solutions Event Processor Plus programming tools and then you program everything you want to do and I couldn't get this to load on the Event Processor Plus because this port here the MIDI out into the MIDI in of the Event Processor didn't power it. It, it did power it before but like for some reason it stopped or it was a special MIDI cable that I had some voodoo or something so what I thought I could do and in that video is that I thought I could send the MIDI out from the Focusrite into the MIDI in to program it but to power it so that the red light would come on I would take a MIDI out from a keyboard into the MIDI out of the Event Processor Plus and that would usually work because MIDI out would send power but it, but an out going into an out, I don't know why, uh, but it did not want to uh, have itself programmed by receiving power from the out and programming from the in. It has to receive power and the programming from the in. The out doesn't have anything to do with uh, the actual programming this guy. The only time for out is after that's done, so that the the message that you send into it is then changed into something else and continued out of it. So how did I get this workaround to work? So the problem is that the MIDI in here was going to the MIDI out of the Focusrite. So instead I sent the MIDI out of the Focusrite into the MIDI in of the Roland A300 Pro. I love these controllers because they work so well with the Kronos. This controller, even though it's just a MIDI controller and doesn't make any sounds, does have MIDI in and MIDI out. So I send the MIDI out into the MIDI in. And then I merge, there's a switch on the side here that merges any incoming signal through the MIDI in, goes to the MIDI out. And there's a destination for that that you can configure in the edit menu if you press these both buttons together. And you toggle that to be uh, MIDI uh, instead of USB. Or it can be both, I think. So, there's, this is the great part. MIDI in from the focus right is MIDI out in here. Okay, the MIDI out then goes into the event processor plus. That's, isn't that great? It's perfect. See, the, the computer sends through USB the programming that I've done in the, in the program. It sends it through USB, sends the MIDI out, but instead of there, which wasn't working, it goes to the keyboard first. And the keyboard sends that information that it's getting from the focus right out from the MIDI out and into the MIDI in of there. So you're putting a, an extra guy, an extra middleman in the middle. And this guy was able to provide power. Right now I've got it plugged into the DC uh, from that Roland adapter. And it works. Okay, so this is the Vortex 2. And all the, these buttons and switches here can only send out MIDI CC values. They can't be programmed to do MIDI SysX. So what I've done is that this one is, uh, is control change 102, 103, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then this pad is MIDI control change for a toggle for from this is value 0 and this is value 1. And that's all it goes between. I think red is mute, so, uh, but it's not mute yet, it's, it's only just a little value. It's going into here and ch then from here changing that into a mute. So if I take this timbre up here, I, the, the, the minimum being 0 and the maximum being 127, here on the chrono screen, it actually, you see those sliders moving? This is, this is amazing. I never thought I'd get this to work. Do you see the mutes? 
They're all muted. And now we're going to unmute them all. So when I'm in combination mode on the Korg Kronos, I can control the, the volume and the mutes of eight timbres. So really, they don't have to be volume. They can be something cooler. They can be something completely different. Um, that means I don't need to have these be mutes or volumes here. So it controls, this is 16 tracks, and this is the 9 through 16. And this is the, the, the group of eight that the Vortex controls. The first group of eight tracks, uh, 1 through 8, can be controlled off of this, these guys, because this guy doesn't need a MIDI event processor. This guy can actually be made to have all of the buttons, knobs, and switches already uh, go uh, transmit those those Sizzix values into the Kronos. MIDI event processor plus, they are not cheap. There are like, what are you, 120 some bucks? Ouch. Yeah, this guy, he's not such a bad little guy after all. Vortex here. Uh, the problem is, with by doing this, you're tethering him to a MIDI cable, which means he's not wireless anymore. <laughs> That's all for today.